Luther notes in the small catechism that when we pray, Our Father who art in heaven, we're invited to believe that God is our dear Heavenly Father and that we are His dear children and He wants to hear us. He wants us to pray. Luther was really kind of an expert at prayer, though he wouldn't necessarily say so. He would pray, especially every night. He would go by his window at night. We have an account of the day he died. He prayed and then made it over to his bed and died several hours later, also in the midst of a lot of praying. And you pray. You pray when you're at work, when you're in challenging circumstances. You pray for your children, your parents, those around you. You pray that the gospel may be heard by a friend. And you pray at regular times too. I know so many of you use portals of prayer in the morning or at supper time at night with your children, your family, your spouse. Martin Luther gave a wonderful little tract on prayer. It's called A Simple Way to Pray for Peter Master Barber. And Luther sat down one day in the barber's chair in his town of Wittenberg. And as Peter was cutting his hair, he asked him, Martin Luther, how do you pray? I'm having trouble praying. And Luther responded by writing Peter a little tract on prayer. And now CPH has put this out. It's only a couple of dollars. And Luther does something really amazing in this little tract. You know, there's often a debate between whether you're going to pray a rote prayer, a written prayer, or you're going to pray ex corde or something just off the top of your mind. Luther's genius is to combine them both together, but to anchor them in the Word of God. So what Luther does is he has a pattern. He starts with a biblical text or a prayer. You can do this with any prayers or a hymn. But he starts especially with a text of the Bible or the Creed. And he puts it into four segments. I call it ITCP. First, what does this text instruct? Secondly, what do I have to give thanks for with respect to this text? C, what do I have to confess? And then P, a general prayer that winds them all together. So let me just read to you from his prayer on the first commandment. I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods. First, says Luther, I consider what God demands of me and teaches me in this commandment. He wants me to give him my genuine attention in all things. He greatly desires to be my God and for me to regard him as such on pain of losing eternal life. He does not want me to rest my heart on anything else but trust only in him, not on possessions, honor, wisdom, power, holiness, or on any other creature. Second, I thank him for his infinite mercy that he himself descended here below without me asking him or seeking him or meriting him, and like a father offered to be my God to take on what is mine. He will be my consolation, protection, help, and strength, even though indeed otherwise we poor blind men have sought after so many different gods, and we would have continued to seek them if it were not for the fact that he so openly allowed us to hear him and in our human language announced that he would be our God. Who can ever thank him enough for this? Third, I confess and admit my great sin and thanklessness that I have throughout most of my life so terribly despised such a high gift and beautiful teaching with innumerable idolatries. I have so horribly provoked his wrath. I'm sorry for this and plead for grace. Fourth, I pray and say something like this, O oh my God and Lord, by your grace, help me daily to better learn and comprehend your command and give it sincere attention. Guard my heart so that I no longer forget and become unthankful so that I do not seek consolation in any gods on earth nor in any creature, but rather truly cling to you alone and purely as my only God, my dear Lord and Father in heaven. You see how it works? It's really very easy. ITCP. Thank you.